So one of the more important tools linked from the course Moodle page is the class Slackboard. Slack is a commonly used tool in corporate, industrial, and academic settings that hosts communication through both text and file sharing, as well as supports Zoom for video communication. And since it's used so much in so many different industrial and corporate contexts, we thought that this would be a really good opportunity to expose you to this important platform while at the same time supporting learning that happens you know, asynchronously from the main class. So we suggest that you get the actual app for Slack. So to get the actual app, you'll want to go to slack.com slash resources slash slack 101 slash setup slack hyphens in between. And that'll take you to this page. It sort of gives an overview to what slack is, gives sort of an introduction to, you know, how it's organized. And you can see that there's a nice link to slack.com slash download to download the app for your phone, your laptop, whatever device you might have. Personally, I'd recommend installing it on, on both your laptop and maybe your phone. Then if you're out and about and you want to follow up with some questions or whatever, you can do that. That's what I've done is I've put it on both my phone and on my desktop. Once you've downloaded the app, you should see something that looks kind of like this when you open it. Of course, if you're on a Mac or on your phone, it may look slightly different, but the basic idea will still be the same. You will have a sign in button that will direct you to the workspace. And back on the Moodle page, you can see the workspace name. So you can just copy it and drop it in this uh, slot and even with the slack.com it's pretty smart and it'll figure it out for you and it will take you to the login screen you can either create an account or if you're already logged in you can go ahead so once you've done that you should be signed in to what is known as a workspace and a workspace is sort of the shared hub where all of the communication happens. So up in the upper left, you can see sort of a menu and you can see that I'm set to active, uh, which you can change to away, which is nice. You can pause notifications for the app. There's a lot of different things in here. Uh, you can change your profile. Uh, you can upload a picture if you like. It can be you or it can be your dog, your cat, whatever you like. And one thing that I perhaps suggest and invite you to do is when you're doing your display name, uh, put your pronouns in. So I will do that right now. Save the changes. And now you see I've got my pronouns in there. So what are we looking at here on this workspace? So you can see on the left, uh, you've got sort of a collection of channels uh, that you have. These are centered around specific topics. And these are, if they begin with a hashtag, these are public, which means everyone in the class can see what you are writing about. So general is if you have any sort of, well, general questions about the course, I will post announcements here uh, as well as through the forum just to make sure that people get them in as many different ways as possible. There's a channel where you can submit feedback on the course. So if you have some feedback about how the course is going, some suggestions, you can put it here. Uh, there's a random top uh, a channel where you can just post kind of whatever, fun memes, pictures of pets, off topic stuff. And then you've got uh, channels for each unit. So if you have a homework question or something like that, you can post it 
and then also channels for each exam. Also, you'll see a bunch of channels that instead of a hashtag have a little lock. These are private channels for each of the individual teams. So the teams are discussed in a different part of this syllabus, but in short, these are private channels that only members of the team can see, and they're all named after various scientists. So Nother is the channel for the instructional team. Only the people who are subscribed to this particular channel can see what's on there. So if you agree to be on a team that we organize, then we will create a private channel for you with all of your members, and you can use that space to discuss amongst yourselves. And only the group members will be on there. So that's sort of an overview of the channels. Uh, if you're not on an organized team and you you know, make some study buddies with yourselves and you would like to use this platform, you can create a channel by clicking this plus here and give it a name and set it to private if you like. So this is sort of the list. Uh, you can also favorite channels, which will you know bring them up because we're gonna have quite a bit of channels with one with each group. So you'll probably want to favorite a few of them uh, so that they stay at the top of the list for you. So some other useful features that you might want to explore. Uh, you have the Slack bot where you can ask for help on how to use Slack, which is nice. You have below all the channels, you have what's called direct messages where you can message people one-on-one -on -one or up to six people. Um, so you can see me, Dr. T. You can also have a space for yourself. So instead of under direct messages, you see yourself. This is just sort of your own personal notepad. You can save stuff. It, it's just a sort of notepad. So let's talk a little bit more about channels. So within each channel, how does it work? Well, you can type a message uh, to people. So, so you type something in. Uh, you see down in the bottom left, you hit return to send or shift return will add a new line. So maybe I want to add a new line to this. So I'll hit shift enter. You see it adds a nice new line. Uh, you've also got emojis, of course. Uh, I'll add a smiley face to this one and then hit enter to, to send. Now, with 300 people or so in the class, these can get very complex very, very quickly. So how do you deal with that? The best way to do is reply. So you see if you hover over the message, you see various options. You can basically like it, so on and so forth. Uh, you can bookmark it and save it for later. Uh, and you can do what's called reply and thread. So you click this little, looks uh, like a speech bubble, and you click it, and you'll see the thread, and you can add a reply. So and you can see, uh, it doesn't show up in the main work channel, it shows up over here, but if you uh, click it, it will show you the thread. Okay, so that's a good way to keep yourself organized. You can also mention uh, specific people by doing at and their name. So you can do at Dr. T and it'll message me to, uh, it'll sort of highlight me and it'll show up when I peruse these channels. So at Dr. T will get my attention. Or if you're in your uh, private workspace, then, you know, you can message maybe specific members of your group. You can see other specific ads that are kind of cool. Uh, you can notify everyone in the channel. You probably don't want to do this very often. Um, you might in your private workspaces with your teams, your groups, do an at everyone to notify everyone in your workspace. Um, if they're in the app, they'll get sort of a pop-up. Uh, and another nice one is uh, at here. So let's say you're working on a homework problem and you want help basically right now. So what might you do? Well, you could go to the, the unit and type at here 
and just see who else is online and shoot a message. And if they're online, maybe they'll reply to you. So this is a way to sort of get the attention of the people who are actively online at any given moment. Another useful feature of Slack, and part of the reason we're using it, is it interfaces really nicely with Zoom. So let's say you and your team are working on something. So I'll go to the private channel for my team, the instructional team. You can say, you know, you're chatting back and forth and it's just not getting you anywhere and you want to switch to a face-to-face -face conversation, you can just type slash Zoom. And you can open a Zoom to everyone in the Slack channel. Uh, so when you start a meeting, it will invite everyone who's on that board. So you probably don't want to do it on general because that will invite the entire class. Probably best to do on your team boards. Uh, you'll have to authorize the Zoom, but you'll only need to authorize Zoom uh, the one time. So that's most of the features of Slack that are that I think are, are the most important. Uh, I'm sure you'll find others, like there's this uh, directory of all the different people involved, various other things that I'm sure you'll discover, but these are sort of the main features. Feel free to post to uh, general if you have Slack questions or ask the Slack bot like we talked about, and uh, we'll try and get those answered for you. Again, this is a very common tool used in industry, so we think it's a useful thing for you to learn. I uh, hope you find this useful.